invite you, if you have your Bibles, to keep them open there to that passage in Ephesians chapters 2 through 3. And let's again go to the Lord in prayer and pray, pray with me now and for me. Almighty, all-knowing and ever-present God, by your goodness and grace we approach this divine appointment. The proclamation of your living word that so faithfully speaks to our condition. Grant our ears to listen carefully to the voice of your spirit. Grant our eyes to see your kingdom at hand. And fill our hearts with courage to respond in joyful and faithful obedience. We pray in the name and to the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, today is what's known as Epiphany Sunday. It is the Sunday before January the 6th. January the 6th is uh, Epiphany Day. And uh, it is a tradition that dates back even before the celebration of Christmas in the Christian tradition. Uh, It was a practice of the earliest Christians to, uh, on this day, to celebrate the incarnation and the birth and the baptism of Jesus the Christ. So we continue today. That's why there are now you know, 12 days of Christmas. So Christmas, we're continuing Christmas. It begins Christmas Day and then it ends January the 6th with, with Epiphany. So I, I say that just as a reminder that our lives are ordered uh, according to, there, there is a pattern and a time that we, we have the, the Christian calendar and we have the, our, our linear solar calendar. So today we have New Year's, but our New Year actually began with Advent. The, the very first Sunday of Advent began a, a, new, a new year in the, the Christian calendar. So, so today a number of things come together in our, in our pattern, the way that we live our lives. You see, we, we do that so that as we go through the year, we retell the story. And we, we remember as, as we go through the year, this God that we worship came to be with us in Jesus. And we order our lives and we, we structure our time our days, our weeks, around the life of Jesus. And we, that is done so to remember the presence, his presence with us, and his coming again. So every year we go through, we go through these, these patterns that retell and remind us of, of this great story and this great, this great hope that we have. So today, we read the passage in Matthew of the wise men. And that's what we celebrate. That's what Epiphany is to celebrate, that that the light of Christ came and the wise men, the wise men of the east, they were most likely Persian astrologers. So they studied the stars and their their lives were guided by by the stars. And so, so they were studying the stars and this great star appeared and it guided them and somehow this star was an indication to them that a king had been born. And not just any king, but specifically of, of Judea. So, so they naturally went to the capital of the country of Judea, to Jerusalem. But we know that Jesus wasn't born in Jerusalem, was he? So he, they arrived to Jerusalem to inquire about this king. And then they, they meet Herod, who, who sends them on a quest and asks them to return. Herod was known as uh, just a terrible, horrific ruler. Very, very violent, very vengeful, especially toward any rival, especially Jewish rivals uh, who might take away any, any of his power. So he wanted, to, he wanted to know about this king, this Jewish king, this king of the Jews that these wise men had told him about with a plot, with a plan to, to kill him so, so that he wouldn't have any, any rivals. So the wise men came. And we don't know how many wise men there were. Tradition tells us there were three. That's derived because there there are three gifts that were mentioned, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But we really don't know how many there were with any certainty, and that's not that relevant anyway. But there were wise men, and they came and they brought gifts. And what this points to, friends, is this. Is that God's salvation, that even these Persians, these there are these non-Jewish Gentiles. They saw the light. And they came to Jesus. That 
might brought them to Jesus. Now, the passage that we read in Ephesians today, Paul's letter, we know that Paul was an apostle to who? The Gentiles. That was his mission. That was his calling and his purpose in life that God sent him to declare the salvation of Jesus to, to those who were not only Jewish, but those who were Gentiles. And we, we see this develop in, in the book of Acts as the church under, begins to understand this, that, wait a minute, God's salvation is not just for one group of people, but it's for all nations. Not, not just this one, this one group, but for all nations and through all the world. So that's what we declare today in our worship of God. That God sent Jesus to be the Savior of all the world, of all people. Now we see this unfold in, in the Gospel of Acts when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon not just the Jews, but the Gentiles. And we, we get to read this great story in Acts 7 of Cornelius and Peter. And how the Holy Spirit is poured out among them and then they are baptized. So today, friends, I want to ask this question to you as we... As we remember why we worship today and what, what the occasion of our, our calendar is today, have you seen the light? Do you know the light of Christ in your own heart? Has the light of Christ shone in you? I want to invite you today, if, if you don't know him yet as Lord, to make Jesus your Lord today. To receive that light that came to be the light of all the world into your own heart today. And for those of us who have walked with the Lord, who have known the Lord, you may recall that maybe there was a moment in your life that you recall of the light of Christ coming where, where you realize that, that Jesus is your Lord. Perhaps it's been one of those things where you've always, you've never questioned <coughs> that Jesus is your Lord and it's, it's, been, it's been a journey. But yet you, you accept Jesus as your Lord and you profess him to be, to be your Savior. Wherever you're at in your faith journey today, I want, to, I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you today. Because you see, our, our walk with Christ is, is not just a momentary thing or a momentary decision. But it, it is a decision we make every day. As, as we walk with Christ every day of our lives, we, we choose to make him Lord of our lives. I want to leave you today with, with a couple of things. And it's this, that the promise of God for the salvation of all nations has been revealed in Jesus. So I want to give you two things today to consider as Jesus is your Lord. And the first is that whenever Jesus is revealed to us as our Lord, first, we desire to know him more. We desire to know him more. Now today, New Year's Day. And what do we do on New Year's? We make resolutions, right? We make resolutions. Things that, that we might do to, for this year to be a better year than the year before. It's a good thing to do. It's, it is. It's a good, good thing to do. But as, as we consider what that might mean for us who follow Jesus, that we commit our lives to, to the Lord. And if, if we... If we know Jesus is our Lord, then our, our, our daily lives and our, our, the way that we live our lives ought to be patterned in a way so, so that we know Jesus more and more every day. And uh, I, I want to encourage you today to consider a couple of things to, to increase that, that walk. If, if you're experiencing today a, a desire to have a closer walk with, with the Lord, I want to encourage you today. Pray, to pray and seek the Lord what God might be, what might be leading you to do. The early Methodists met and they, they formed classes and societies. They, they formed these groups where they would come together and they would encourage one another. And they, they, had, they had three basic rules that, that guided their life together. The first was to do no harm. To make a decision every day to do no harm. To, to avoid those things which might result in, in sin. To do no harm to others. To do no harm. To be careful how you speak. To not take the Lord's name in vain. Those things. We, we don't talk like that much these days, do we? But we need to be reminded that the words we say, the words we say matter. 
and to keep the Lord's name and to be mindful of how we speak and how we speak especially of, of the Lord. To do no harm. And then secondly, to do good. To show those things that Jesus showed. To embody those things that Jesus embodied because he is with us. Mercy and compassion and justice. Those ought to be marks of our lives as we, as we go and we share the light of Christ with, with others. And then the third one, one of these big words that I may have to try to explain. Keep the ordinances of God. The ordinances. There's another word we don't use a whole lot anymore. I'm explaining what that means, okay? It's coming together. It's, it's being committed to come, come and worship together with the people of God. You know, we need community. You know, our, our faith journey, our faith life, is not meant to be lived alone. It is personal, but it's not, it's not just a private matter. We, we need the body of Christ. We need one another. So commit to, to gathering as, as the church, as often as, as the church gathers, to, to be with the people of God. So the ordinance is with God, we're that, to, to be together, to have the Lord's Supper. We're going to do that in just a little while. I think that's a, a great way to start the year, to be in communion together with, with the Lord, to receive the Lord's Supper, this grace of God. To, to commit yourself to, to being together, to family and private prayer, to searching the scripture. And I, I, I left today, you'll find on the, on the table, uh, as you make your way out, a, a daily Bible reading plan. Um, if you don't have a plan, if you're looking for a way to get started, I would encourage you to do that. Um, there are many different ways. I, I think technology is great. If you're on smartphones and computers, you can find all kinds of, uh, of daily Bible reading plans. And, and they're handy because they, they'll give you reminders. Um, I think that, that's helpful. If you're like me and like to sit down and, and thumb through the pages, then and something else might work for you. Um, this is just one suggestion. And this is a, the model that the plan that I've got is where you'll read through the whole Bible in a year. And each day you have a, an Old Testament and a New Testament reading. It takes about 15 minutes, about 15 minutes, and you can read through through the Bible in, in a year. So if, if that, if, I would encourage you to consider that. If if you want to consider other, there are all kinds. Like I said, you know, there are topical plans that you can follow. I just find something, and, and the the idea is that you'll schedule a time because. If, if we don't intend to do something, if we don't have a plan to do something, usually we, we don't. And I know that's true for me. That, um, so it, plans and things help me. So I, I want to encourage you to do that. The main thing, be intentional about spending time with Jesus. Because if he's our Lord, if we all have a relationship with him, then we need to be with him. So I want to encourage you today to do that. So Jesus is Lord. We desire to know him more. And then when Jesus is revealed to us as Lord, we desire for others to know him as well. So sharing the good news with others. If we're following Jesus, we ought to be excited about sharing that with others. That others would, would see and would know. So today I want to encourage you with, with those things. And as we, as we move forward through this year, as a community of faith, as a church, I want to lift before you Goals that, that we have set for, for our congregation. I am excited to be your pastor. I'm excited where I see us going this year. I, I see some incredible things that, that I believe God is calling us to. Uh, we've mentioned the backpack. Um, we have a goal this year. We have a goal this year for 15 families or individuals to put $10 back a month for eight months. Well, between now and August. And if we do that, we'll be able to give that school $1,000 to help to feed hungry, to help feed hungry students. I think we can do that very easily. That's one goal. The other goal is the formation of small groups. Now, here's, here's the plan for that. Between now and, and, and February, uh, I'm going to be putting together um, material. And then during the season of Lent, which will be the first week in March, I want you to pray about this. And if you feel God leading you to host a small group, I want you to pray about that. And then in March, I'm going to begin meeting weekly with anyone who would like to host a small group. We're going to meet every week, and we're going to have some training, and then we're going to 
develop uh, a format for, for what that will look like. And then during the, the season of Lent, we will begin to put those groups together. For those who would like to join a small group, we have four goals. One, to, to have a, a small group for youth, a small group for young adults, and at least two for adults. So pray about that now. As we go into this, this new year, consider what group God may be calling you to be a part of, if God may be calling you to host a group. And then in Easter, we will launch. We, we will kick off the small groups to start in Easter. Pray about that. The passage that we read in Ephesians, as Paul writes about those who were once far off have now been brought together. Just like God brought the wise men who were far, far off, God has brought, brought us who were once far off to, to be with Jesus. And he goes on to write that you are being formed together. Jesus Christ is the foundation. God is forming you together as his dwelling place. God is forming us together to be the dwelling place of God for this community. And that excites me every time I think about it. And as I pray for this community and I pray for this congregation, I look forward with anticipation to see what God is going to do as we move into, into these goals this year. Another goal we have is related to a, a dream and a vision to, to increase our facility space, to, to possibly build a sanctuary, a new sanctuary to increase facility space so that so that we may be able to better serve this community so that we may be able to increase the what we are able to do in this community for the glory of God as we do that and as we have those conversations about where God may be leading us let us remember that we are the dwelling place that God is building us together and is if our spiritual house if our spiritual house is ordered by the love of God and the love of neighbor, God will take care of the rest of it. I'm not worried about any of that. God will provide anything and everything that is needed. So this year, I want to prayerfully seek God and, how, and ask how God may be ordering us to structure and to form our lives together as a community as we seek to grow in the love of God with one another. The early Methodists had a tradition. On New Year's, they would, have, they would renew their covenant together. See, this word that we use to describe this relationship is covenant, that God is a God of covenant who, who calls us into relationship. And each year they would renew on New Year's Day that covenant. So I'm going to invite us to do that now as we move into a time of communion together. So I'm going to close the sermon with this covenant prayer. If you'll turn in your hymnal to number 607, you'll find the prayer there. And I'm going to pray this as a closing to the sermon. And as I do this, I want to invite you to pray this between you and the Lord. And let this be your prayer. And if you have one of those smartphones, and if you want to take a camera, take your camera out, take a picture of it. That way you'll have it with you uh, as a reminder of this covenant that you are renewing today between you and the Lord. So this is a covenant prayer in the Wesleyan tradition. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. In the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Let's turn now to page 12.